here with 10 colleagues from around the world with CH2M and we're here in beautiful Rwanda surrounded by amazing scenery and um, we're here um, on behalf of CH2M Foundation um, in partnership with the non-profit organisation Bridges to Prosperity to build this fantastic bridge here in Gasora Gasabo. <laughs> So this is what it's all about, this river, tributary from the Nia Bogogo. We're going to help build a bridge and help save lives. We've been here about 15 minutes. We've already seen about 15 people cross this bridge. Very high traffic flow here, and this is just one out of three of the main channels that we're going to be crossing. The wood has been here for a long time. It's creaky. The water in the channel is two meters deep, steep embankment here. so. We're hoping we will make a difference with the new bridge. <laughs> when the, the rain is very heavy, there are many crashes. There are many people goes away with the, this water. So the people are, are died. Minimum is two people. So it is very important to construct that bridge. So during the rainy season, the water is going to be about this high on me. So you can imagine that there's no way that you can get across this river. On the other side, there's a, a major roadway. And that major roadway is really the lifeline to education, clinics, and markets. So it's very important to have a bridge here. And the people have been looking for a bridge for many years. We're staying in a village called Gaseki, a 10 minute drive from the bridge site. So we kind of had to settle in there first before starting work on the bridge. And we have two houses, the main house where the women all are and the food and then the men's house i can't tell you anything about that because i never venture there here we have the main heart of the house the kitchen this is olive she's our cook who's been cooking and cleaning for us she's been cooking on a gas stove out here and getting water for us and we're very appreciative of all of the work she's done for us <laughs> and this is the main room and generally this is where we gather in the evenings to discuss the next day's work and eat things. The main bedroom is uh, almost like the girls dormitory. Home sweet home. <laughs> so now we leave the, the household and go to the uh, facilities as we call them. So here is our shower room. You bring in a can of water and a bowl and there you are. I might just let this one speak for itself. Okay, got my steel toes on. We're getting ready to go to the site. About to be hard at work. Prior to the group's arrival here, you can see there's been a lot of work done. The Bridges to Prosperity folks have guided the local Rwandans on how to do the construction for about two months before our arrival. When the project is starting, local community are coming to the site. They try to prepare the site, like collecting the stones, collecting the sand. And after that, we select some local laborers to help us and we have to pay them. And we try to look for the local community which are poor than the others. These works have included a, a huge excavation that is about 10 feet deep. And of course, this is all being done by hand. After the excavation, they've poured massive concrete anchors. So the dead man anchors start up here with the two large concrete blocks where you can see the hoops of reinforcing steel sticking up. And they go below grade roughly to where I'm standing here. That shows you about how long they are. 
They work by grabbing the weight of the soil in front of them, not just the weight of the concrete as well, as the resistance to stop the, the suspension bridge from caving into itself. So they provide the tension resistance for the suspension cable. So the main suspension cables for the bridge will attach to the dead man anchors here. The large pipe that's been cast in is actually connected in tension down into the dead man anchors that go down into the ground. So we'll wrap our suspension cables around here and then cinch them up to form the last connection for the suspension cables. And certainly last but not least is the most massive piece of concrete work here that you can see these gentlemen finishing. That work is the approach. And so we build concrete pedestals that our towers are going to sit on top of and then need to build the ramp so that the people can walk up and get access to the bridge. One of the things that's very important to us is to engage women and provide opportunity for them to work too. And fortunately here in this community, it's been very well received, so we're very happy with that. So every morning we do a health and safety talk with both the Rwandans and our CH2M team. And uh, besides giving them a good laugh and trying to translate words, I think it was uh, critical to keeping a good culture of safety here. So I grew up in the uh, Democratic Republic of Congo, which the environment is not different from me, and the problems are almost the same across this region, where the infrastructure is not really safe, or it doesn't exist, it's not in place. It's always a problem moving from one village to another, or even going to the next market. I wanted to be part of the team that will provide safe access. I wanted to give something back. It's important to give back to the community and especially use our engineering skills for improving lives around the world. This bridge is about enabling the local community. One of the things we have to realize in life is, you know, it's not that people are unable to get up and, and get going, but they just have small obstructions that they can't get past. I'm hoping this bridge will open up the unlimited potential of this valley. Um, so these are the rebar that are going to hang over the main suspension cables. Uh, right now we have some of the local staff helping us bend our rebar out. Tessa and I are measuring them to the appropriate length and marking them and labeling them so that when we move them over to the bridge site, we can have them organized and ready to place in their proper order. So we spent the day uh, erecting the scaffolding uh, in order to get ready to raise the towers. Uh, we're going to be doing four levels of scaffolding and we're really making sure it's secure, that it's level and that everything's tied down properly. Uh, this is something that's really integral to getting the towers up since we aren't using any uh, uh, machinery or cranes or anything like that. We'll be able to uh, erect the towers with a pulley and it's all uh, hand labor so it's very important that we set it up properly. I don't think I've ever worked this hard in my life. <laughs> and we've only been here for three days. <laughs> the tower columns and the cross members have arrived, so now we're going to move them to each of the tower ramps. It's definitely a positive experience for me. Working alongside the people who are actually going to be using the bridge is, a, is an amazing feeling. One, two, three. So when we arrived, the towers weren't quite ready. Um, they were still in the fabrica steel fabrication shop. So a group of us went down there to assist with their um, fabrication and there was quite a lot of hard work really. We found the towers in less than finished shape. Um, there was still a lot of work to be done. We stayed on site for uh, about four and a half days working um, with the local students and staff um, trying to finish fabricating the towers. To turn the, um, the raw steel shapes into the, the towers which you'll see on, on the finished bridge uh, required uh, a monumental amount of welding, cutting and grinding took all the rust off, we painted it, and mm. then... Ta-da! They're, <laughs> they're trying to bolt it together. Yeah. Video help get it. 
The towers are up, the first milestone. We're painting the bridge CH swam purple and we learned this week that purple is also the Rwandan genocide remembrance colour and our teammates have asked us to paint even more of it purple. The cables are just about to be pulled across the river and then they'll be pulled up onto the towers. Yeah, so my work platform has been uh, pretty elevated. And quite honestly, I, I feel like I'm pretty uh, lucky. I get to see a pretty amazing view. The most challenging aspect of the project, in my opinion, has been the scaffolding and everything related. And so it's been a, it's been a challenge, but at the same time, it's been such an adventure. It's been great. There has been beautiful synergy between the B2P team at CH2M Hill and the local community in helping build this bridge. What an achievement. Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? Yeah, every day we come home, there's about, I don't know, at least 30 or 40 kids that come and greet us and chase our cars up. And they love football and they love jump rope and uh, they love pencils. <laughs> It's market day in Gaseki, and with bridges, people are able to get access to the markets and get things sold and bring stuff home for their families. There's uh, about 300 sites across the country that should be bridged. So one of our main goals here was to help bring up the capacity of, of the local staff so that they can finish the job. So we, we spent a lot of time trying to share all the knowledge we could but then at the same time, I also learned a lot from them. So right now in the background, you can see they're uh, surveying to set the sag in the cable. So that's where the cable comes down to the low point. And we're trying to set the low point, the elevation, where it will drop down while we're loading the bridge and building the bridge so that the deck is level. Uh, once the sag has been set in the cable, we can begin to hang the suspenders, which are made of, of reinforcing steel or rebar that took many days to bend and fabricate here on site. Uh, from the suspenders, there's a cross beam that runs across from that cross beam, the deck is supported. The suspenders are now all up and we are now screwing the decking to the cross beams. It's starting to look really good. One of the tasks that I spent a lot of time on was actually cutting the deck. It was one of the materials that was delivered differently than anticipated. We were looking for something that was about 200 millimeters wide and it was delivered at about 120 millimeters wide, which meant that we're going to have more runs of deck across side to side of the, the bridge, more pieces, more bolts, more cutting of, of the timber as well. Uh, biggest challenge when cutting the deck was the, the extreme warped condition of the boards. Each time we've had a material delivery delay or a different material that's been delivered, decisions have been made relatively quickly and as a result have found our way back onto schedule fairly rapidly. When you're given a problem 
you got to have some ingenuity and creativity in order to keep moving and you can't get stuck on it. The term all hands on deck is literally going down at the moment. People are drilling, hammering, doing whatever is possible to get this deck done. And with two days go to inauguration, there is a serious buzz around the place. We're starting the decking with two teams on each end of the bridge, and we're planning to meet in the middle. One of the biggest things that I'm learning in a project manager role is the different dynamics that go into building a team. So I've been trying to really utilize all aspects of our very diverse team. At 6 o'clock, it's late in the day, the last plank is in and this is officially a bridge. No, this is not Ireland, this is Rwanda. From the house to the car, I'm already covered in mud, so God knows what is to meet us once we get to site. It's turned the, uh, the work site into a, a pretty muddy field. Uh, luckily, uh, yesterday we put in a really long day and finished all the decking, so all we have left to do is uh, put up the fencing as our safety barrier, and then uh, the bridge should be complete. So it's been a real team effort between the CH2M team, Bridges Prosperity and the locals here who seem to be eating spinach morning, noon and night because they can carry so much more than all of us. Tell no one. It's inauguration day for our bridge in Gazira. As you can hear in the background, the party has started. It has been a pleasure to work with all of you and to learn from you. We hope that this bridge will help you reach your full potential and help you and your children achieve your dreams. We've had the speeches, we've had the congratulations, and now the bridge is open. So when I look at this bridge, I feel proud in that we have managed to accomplish it with a, you know, limited time, limited tools, and limited technology. I'm glad that we were able to be a small part to help build the bridge. Saving lives, changing lives of many people, and that's the reason why we're here. <laughs> 